In this short video, we're going to learn about the new features that have been released in the VS Code extension for Cake. In this new release, we've included a the functionality to uh, automatically parse all of the build.cake files uh, to find out all of the tasks that are defined within those take files and make them available to, to run them straight away. In addition to that, we've made the debugging, uh, the setting up of the debugging experience uh, much easier than it was before. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is we need to install the Cake extension. So that can be done simply by clicking on here and searching for Cake. This is the one that we're after, so make sure that it says 080 and go ahead and click install. With that done, after a reload, the first thing that we'll notice straight away is that we get better support for the Cake files that exist within this project that I've got open here. So straight away, we'll see that we've got the Cake icon here, and we've started to get some syntax highlighting appearing in the right in the right hand window here. So a little bit of an explanation, what I've got here is two uh, .cake files. One is the main build.cake file, and the other is just a helper script. The helper script is doing nothing else than outputting some information to the screen. So in this case, it's saying running helper. And for the main task that I've got here, the default task, I've got hello world. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, download the bootstrapper for Cake so that we can get up and running with these script files. So that was an existing, an existing piece of functionality within an extension, but let's just go ahead and get that installed. So we can search for Cake here and we can say install bootstrapper. And then we're gonna get a choice between whether we want the PowerShell or the bash bootstrapper. So in my case, I'm on Windows. I'm going to go ahead and download the PowerShell Bootstrapper. And what that gives us is this build.ps1 file here uh, that's going to execute the, the build task for us. So with that in place now, uh, what I can do is I'll just go ahead and run build here, just so that we can see that that's working. So this is going to do nothing more than download Cake as it normally would. So this isn't, this isn't uh, any part of the extension that's providing this functionality. This is just Cake out of the box working as it would normally. What we're going to do now, though, if I hit uh, the command palette again and do a search for this time task and say run task, what we're going to get is it's now inspected both of the uh, cake files that I've got in this project folder here, it's, uh, the build.cake and the helper.cake, and it's found both the tasks here. So it's asking me which one do I want to run. So if I go ahead and click on run default here, this message is popping up here. This is actually a bug, an identified bug within Visual Studio Code that is going to be fixed in the next release. Uh, so for now, just go ahead and click uh, continue without scanning. That won't happen in the next version of Visual Studio Code. So what's happening now is it's actually executing that task. So it's going to go ahead and do exactly the same thing that we did before. And the output is going to say, hello world. But if I uh, hit F1 again and run task, I can select the other one and say run helper Again, just say continue without scanning, and it's going to execute that task for us straight away. So what this brings to the table is it's just uh, it's lowering the barrier to entry. Rather than having to go drop to the command line, uh, type in build.ps1 hyphen target, and then the name of the target, we just get a nice list of all of the available tasks uh, within our current project. The next thing that we wanted to do is within Visual Studio Code, as some of you know, we have to got the ability to enable debugging. So previously, we would have asked you to go to the, uh, we've got a blog post on how to set up that debugging. So we've, we've now added functionality into this extension to make that uh, that little bit easier. So when you're using Visual Studio Code, we need Visual Studio, we, we need the cake.core CLR uh, binary rather than the, the cake.exe. That's because Visual Studio Code is dependent on the core CLR binaries as opposed to the .NET framework binaries. So what we've got in our tools folder just now, as a result of running build.ps1, is just cake, not cake.coreclr. Now what we could do is we could go into this package.config file and we could add an entry for cake.coreclr, but that's a little bit too much hard work. So what we've got instead, if I just hit the command palette again and search for cake, we've now got this new command here, which is to download debug dependencies. So I go ahead and click on that. What it's going to do is it's going to run off to NuGet, it's going to download that cake.coreclr package, and it's going to drop it into our uh, tools folder, which is where it needs to be in order to execute debugging. 
So having done that step, the next thing that the blog post that I mentioned before would ask you to do is it would ask you to create a launch.json file. And that launch.json file is the uh, bootstrapper uh, that makes the debugging session come alive. But again, adding that manual, it's a little bit too much like hard work. So what we'll do instead, there's two mechanisms that we can use now. The first is just by hitting F5, what is going to be brought up is a set of default uh, launch scripts that could be executed. So Kick uh, Visual Studio Code comes in with a number of those out of the box, but you'll, you'll see that there's another one added in here, and it's the Cake extension that you've just installed that's bringing this one to the table. So if I go ahead and click on that, what we're going to get here is a predefined launch.json file that straight away knows exactly what we need to do. So it's it's running the cake.core CLR uh, DLL that we've downloaded as part of our dependencies. It's executing the build.cake file that we've got here. This part here is hard coded. So if you've got a differently named uh, cake as your root cake script, you're going to need to change that manually. But what that gives us, if I jump back to our build.cake file, and let's set a breakpoint on this line here, this information file, with that uh, launch.json file in place, I can just hit F5. Straight away, it's going to start the debug session. And what we're going to get is it's going to hit this breakpoint straight away. So you can imagine on a larger cake script, we've then got the ability to see uh, stack traces, variable names, all that sort of stuff uh, to improve the, the debugging of the, the cake script you're trying to develop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and it'll execute as normal. Finally, if you want to debug another target, let's say we wanted to debug that run helper target that I was showing you earlier, I can just go ahead and add the target here, run helper. And let's just check to see if I've got a breakpoint there. I do. So if I just hit F5 now again, it'll launch that debugging session, but this time it's going to debug into that associated cake file as opposed to the, the main root one. There we go. Let's hit the breakpoint and I can hit play. The only other thing I want to bring to your attention is that in addition to creating that launch.json file by uh, just hitting F5, if you did already have a launch.json file, I just can just add another configuration here. And then we've then got, am I in the wrong place? I think I must be. If I do that and get uh, hit control space to bring up IntelliSense, we've then got the configurations listed, a cake debug configuration listed here as well. So you can just go ahead and add that in that way as well. So if you've already got a launch.json file for other debugger tools within your Visual Studio Code workspace, you can add it in that way as well. Thanks for listening. I hope this has been useful. Uh, please reach out if you've got any questions or any suggestions on how the uh, Visual Studio Code extension for Cake can be extended. Thank you very much.